Jesus Christ. Now some viewers will object at this point, and no doubt to the analysis that takes place throughout this video, by citing the one passage of scripture that everyone seems to know. Judge not, that you be not judged. And some religious knuckleheads decided that they were the ones to pass judgment, even though in a very good book it says, do not pass judgment lest ye be judged. So, the moral of this story is, who are you to judge? There's only one true judge and that's God. It's important, particularly in our relativistic age, that we understand that Jesus' words are in no way a blanket prohibition of making judgments. If they were, we would be paralyzed from ever making any kind of value judgment, including whether someone is wrong for making the judgment that someone else is wrong for judging. To give you a practical example of this principle in action, take Madonna, an intentionally provocative artist who has made a career of using the judge not defense to justify the extreme expressions of sex and spirituality that characterize her life and art. She views herself as an artist whose right to freedom of expression is practically sacred and not to be limited. This is what I consider freedom of speech, freedom of expression, and freedom of thought. Ironically, other people are not afforded this same freedom. When Newsweek and NBC's Jonathan Alter questioned the propriety of celebrities like Madonna having babies without a husband, she didn't hesitate to judge Alter's opinion, telling him, you actually have no right to criticize me. You really don't. The most important thing is that I say the things I want to say in my music or whatever expression that may be. She also had no problem passing judgment on overindulgent fans. Our own insatiable need to run after gossip and scandals and lies and rumors. In this last instance, the Bible agrees with Madonna's judgment. But you understand the point. Life is filled with and is in fact impossible without making judgments. MTV's Choose or Lose Street Team. And really, when we turn off the smoke screen, we all know it. Whether we're choosing friends or deciding for whom to vote, judgments run to the very core of our day-to-day -day existence. Send your friends e-cards from chooseorlose.excite.com to remind them that if they don't choose to vote, we all lose. When Jesus said, judge not, the context was judging hypocritically and without concern for the other person's soul. Outside this sinful context, judging is not only right, it's commanded. Do not judge according to appearance, Jesus said, but judge with righteous judgment. And it's here where we come to the next big issue we need to lock in on. What's the proper standard to use in order to judge righteously? MTV. Is MTV right when it says that being butch and gay is good, but intolerance is bad? Is Moby judging righteously when he states that animals have the same rights as humans? How about Rage Against the Machine's condemnation of capitalism? Yeah. What standard is Beavis using when he declares that a ban, well, you know. Is Frank Zappa making a right judgment when he said that the best way to raise a happy, mentally healthy child is to keep him or her as far away from a church as you can? How about Bjork's conviction that you should do whatever you want, even if it's morally incorrect? A statement, by the way, which requires making a judgment between what's moral and what's not. And what of our earlier caller's assessment of my intelligence and character? Just like you, you stupid mother... By what standard was he judging me? Well, in the words of Jesus, if we're to judge properly, we're not only to avoid hypocrisy and hatred, we're also not to judge according to appearances. We're not to rely, in other words, on our own senses, our own self-determined or even culturally determined opinions as to what's right and wrong. To use other language found in the Bible, we're not to lean to our own understanding, but instead in all our ways acknowledge God. 
or as Jesus put it, we're to judge, as we've seen, with righteous judgment. And how do we judge righteously? How do we ultimately discern what's right and wrong? Well, the standard is God's Word. For the Word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword and is a discerner or judge of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Salt and Peppa got it partially right. There's only one true judge and that's God. So chill and let my father do his job. God is the judge, but it's his word, the Bible, that judges us. To chill, to not use the standard of God's word to discern the ideas and actions presented by the contemporary music industry, is fundamentally to disobey the Father's command to both judge and cast down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought captive in obedience to Christ. Understanding this, I know I've now uncovered a new problem that some of you watching this video don't believe or don't want to believe that the Bible is the true Word of God or that Jesus is the Messiah or any number of the other truths central to the Christian faith. In fact, if you've been raised on a steady diet of popular culture, you probably view the Bible as a collection of myths and Christianity as a religion for dweebs who wear polyester, listen to bad music, and think that sex is dirty. Okay, I understand your position. Frankly, until I was 26, I felt the exact same way. But try to keep an open mind and heart and at least understand conceptually the basic principle here. That it's right. In fact, it's necessary, according to the teachings of Christ, to use the Word of God to judge ourselves and the world around us. And finally, to preempt the inevitable outcries of censorship, allow me to go on record. We're not here pushing for record banning, record burning, or even the dubious practice of rating rock albums. We're not even trying to control what people listen to. This is not an anti-rock music video. What we're after is something much, much deeper. Our goal here is to help you understand the big picture, to peel back the veneer of pop culture and grasp the worldviews, the underlying ideas and presuppositions that pulse beneath the surface. There's more here than meets the eye and ear, as Courtney Love of Hull acknowledged quite openly. I feel like I have a duty, she said. I, as an architect, have a need to impose my worldview on the culture. Well, I'm not interested in imposing anything. But if you want to learn something about these worldviews, if you want to understand the blueprints being used by the architects of the contemporary music industry, and how that blueprint compares to the one being used to build the kingdom of God. Well, stay tuned. That's what this video is all about. And one last thing before we get started. The production of this series spanned the first three years of the new millennium. In the ten years since the first Hell's Bells video, artists and styles have come and gone. No doubt that trend will continue. And yet, the more things change, the more they stay the same. Arthur Brown evolves into Alice Cooper, who morphs into Rob Zombie, who, if the trend continues, will yield some new shock rocker in the not-too-distant future. It's our prayer that by focusing on the larger themes and the spiritual energies fueling so much of the rock and roll industry, this video can help the viewer 10 years from now evaluate bands that don't yet exist, songs that have yet to be written. To this end, what follows is almost as diverse as its subject matter. From science to history, documentary expose to parabolic drama, biography to music video, we pray that God's Spirit uses this presentation to take you on a journey to the soul of rock and roll.